So here we are in the great plague of 2020. Everybody's on lockdown. And earlier this week, the new blood moon came up. And everybody went out and took pictures of it and stuck it on the web. And to be perfectly honest, all of them are boring. It was just a black background with the moon. In it. You need to do something with these type of shots. So maybe something like this, eh? So well, let's get started on this. We're going to start with a blank document. And we're going to bring in the first image, which is the sky. It's just a black and white of a sky. Quite an angry sky, actually. So we're going to drag that down. We're going to grab the layer on the right, and we're going to drag it in. I'm going to get rid of the original now. And the shot we want is at night time. Blue is the colour of night. So if we go down to the bottom here, oh, I never hang about it, will say create new or adjustment layer. Click on there, we can select colour balance. So the colour balance gives you three sliders. We're going to move the bottom slider towards the blue. And we're going to move the top slider towards the cyan. And that should give a, a bit of a night tiny look about it. Yep, just a bit too bright. So we'll go back down to the bottom again. So that add a new adjustment there. And this time select hue and saturation. And what we're going to do is just simply turn down the light. By moving the lightness over to, I don't know, something about 50-ish. Looks like nighttime. Right, so now for the second image, which is this one of a crow and a pigeon sitting on a telephone wire. Now we're going to select them out. Um, this is a good time to explain to you what contiguous means at the top here. If you have contiguous ticked, Contiguous, continuous, it's the same thing. Um, if I click here in the sky, see, so select everything until it hits a different color. So it's only to pick this part of the sky, not the bottom. If I turn that off, make sure contiguous is not ticked, and click in the same place again. So he's selected both sides because now it's not looking for a continuous colour, it's just looking for that colour. And so it's picked both of them. Now this is the sky we've got selected here, so we don't want that. We want the bird selected. So we'll go to bird to the selection and inverse it. Now we've got the bird selected, but I don't want the pigeon. So we need to get rid of the pigeon. So I'm going to do that with the polygonal tool. Up on the left hand side. If I pick that, all these tools work the same. So if I press Shift with the tool, it'll get a plus on, which means it'll add to the selection. <coughs> if I press Alt, then it'll put a minus on, meaning it'll take away from the selection. So keep my alt press down, I'll just go across here, round the pigeon, connect it back up. And see, top half of the pigeon's gone. Again, press alt, round the pigeon, and the it is gone. So from here, We'll go to select, modify, and we'll further the selection by just one radius. And that'll just take away the sharp edge of the selection. Also, it's an appropriate thing to do considering it's a bird. Right, so now we need to get this out of this layer and onto its own layer. And we'll do that with Control G. Control Jasper. If I press it, we've just created a new layer here. 
If I turn that off, you can see what we've got. We've only got a selection. So we're going to pull that down out of the way. We can grab the selection there, at the top here, and drag it in. We can get rid of the original. We don't need to save it. Now we'll get the move tool. I can resize this. Hmm. Yeah, it's about the right size, I think. Somewhere about there. And of course, it's the silhouette that we're going for. So, the way to, to convert this into a silhouette is again to go down to that adjustment layer, get a hue and saturation, attach it to the crow. If you put your finger on Alt and work down, and you see it turns to a little down arrow. And when you click it, the down arrow comes on this layer, showing that this layer is attached to this layer. So anything I do on this layer will only affect the crow layer. So I grab the lightness and just slap it all the way over to the left. We end up with a silhouette. Right, next thing we want to do is get that blood moon in. Well, I haven't got a blood moon, but I've got another one. There you go. Pitch of a moon. We don't want the black, obviously. We just want the moon. So we're going to get the magic wand tool again. We're going to click the black. Then again, we're going to go to selection. Modify. Oh no, we're not. We're going to go to selection inverse, which will put it around. So now we've only got the moon selected. Then I've got to select modify. What I'm going to do is contract the selection by two pixels, and that'll just take away any chance of a black edge on the moon. Again, we're going to put it out onto its own layer. Control J for Jasper. Puts it on its own layer. There you go there. So we'll drag this down again. Grab the moon. Bring it in. Then we can get rid of the original. <coughs> Using the move tool, we'll resize it to somewhere like that. And again, this is the wrong colour. It wants to be a night colour, a blue. So make sure you're on the moon layer. We'll go down to add a new adjustment layer and we'll get the colour balance again. The same as what we did with the clouds. This time though, we're going to attach it. We're going to alt click between them. To make sure that this only affects the moon. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with the clouds. We're going to move the blue up and move the cyan up. So we get a nice colour. And we're going to go down and get a new adjustment layer again. This time you and sat. Again, alt click between them. And this time we'll actually lighten them a bit because it is the more reflecting light. So we've got something like that. Now we may have noticed a problem here. Um, clouds are well, a couple of miles away. A moon, on the other hand, is three quarters, no, it's a quarter of a million miles away. So them clouds should be lying over the top of that moon. An easy way to do that would be to just take away the clouds and put the, this background colour yeah, in this place but it would look fairly phony so I'm going to do it a different way I'm going to go down to where, where original they are right at the bottom where they are one and I'm going to 
go to make a new adjustment layer and this time I'm going to go for solid colour. Now I'm going to pick the darkest blue I've got on the outside, which is about there. And see it OK. So now I've got a dark blue overlaid by the clouds. So now if I edge away the clouds, it will look more natural. So I'm going to go on to the cloud layer, which is the second layer from the bottom. I'm going to go to this icon, which is the add a layer mask. And then I'm going to get a black brush. Now, as I say, you can just, I could just take away the clouds totally, well, it would look a bit phony. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edge the clouds away. So, I'm going to turn the opacity down on the brush to about 20. Make sure it's soft. And basically, all I've got to do is keep clicking about on the looks right. See, it's just reducing everything by 20%. So, click in, click, click. Take this corner a bit away, I think. Yeah. Let me reduce that so that it's starting to look like it's just popping through the clouds. You see, that looks much more natural. It just looks like you've got a break in the clouds. And to finish this off, we'll go to the top layer, we'll put a new layer on at the bottom here, create new layer. We'll get the foreground colour and we'll go pick the lightness of the cloud. So somewhere there. And we'll reduce the size of the brush using the square brackets. And we'll just pop the eye. Oop. We'll have to turn the opacity of the brush up 100%. And we'll just pop the eye of the crow in. Yep, looks alright. So, the last thing we'll do is we'll create a new adjustment layer again. This time it will be levels. And what we'll do is we'll just bring the whiteness in to the bump. Something like that. There you go. Now isn't that much more better way of displaying your mood than just having it on a on a screen by itself? Just a reminder: um, a written tutorial and the source images are available on the South Shields Digital Group site. Um, there's a link to that in the header of my channel and a link in the description of this tutorial. Hey, thanks for listening.